Hi, boys and girls. I've never been great at bowling, but I thought today we could give it a chance. Wish me luck. That was a strike, by the way. Hey, so cabbage is actually, the word cabbage comes from a French word, choux. It's kind of fun to say, C-H-O-U. But the cabbage is actually originated from Ireland and around Europe, from the Irish people and the Celtic people. Now, they spread all the way throughout Europe during around the 15 or 1600s because of two reasons. Number one, they were really cheap to grow and they grew in cold and warm climates. Number two, cabbages only took about three months from the time it was a seed till you got the entire vegetable, right? So when they grew quickly, people could use them so much more often in their diets. Now let's figure out, come over here and I'll show you a little bit about what's good about cabbage. Okay, so this is a really fancy word, pantothenic acid, don't worry. All it means is B5. Now remember how we've been talking about the B family vitamins, how they help take your food that you eat and turn it into energy, right? Well, vitamin B5 is found in cabbages. So much vitamin B5, it's your full serving in a day, right? But vitamin B5 not only helps to digest those carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids and help absorb the nutrients and then turn it into energy, but it also helps your brain and your nervous system like we talk about, right? They also, pantothenic acid also helps your skin. It helps it to stay kind of soft and smooth. So a lot of these vitamins work together, but then they have specific things that they're really good at. So just one serving of cabbage is really high in vitamin B5. All right, let's find a few ways to get cabbage in your diet. One of the fun things about cabbage is how easily these little leaves peel off, right? So I washed it, but if you happen to bowl with your cabbage, you can peel off these leaves and just get the new, fresh, clean ones right inside, right? So I've taken off a couple of leaves here. Now, all I'm gonna do for this fun recipe is I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Now I'm gonna chop up this half of a cabbage and a little bit of the purple, and I'll show you what else we're gonna add. how beautiful these are. Aren't these incredible? I love all these little tiny circles and grooves. It almost looks like a maze, right? Cabbages are pretty incredible. So all I did, especially on the red one, you have to kind of cut out this root. Just take your knife, cut out right here, and then pull it out, okay? Make sure you have help so you don't want to cut yourself. So now I'm going to take something called ramen noodles, right? These are kind of funny, and I just kind of whack them on the counter till they're all broken up. I'm going to open them up, and I'm going to sprinkle them on here. I know that kind of seems funny. Now, Take the flavoring, I like the chicken flavoring, so get the flavoring and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it right in here and we're gonna make a nummy little dressing, right? It's gonna be super duper simple, okay? Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna add some vinegar. Okay, so I added the chicken packet and now I did three tablespoons of vinegar, right? So I just added the last one and now I'm gonna do two tablespoons of sugar. Remember, you can always add more, so start with less. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of sugar. Good. Then I'm gonna add half a cup of really healthy olive oil. Now, sometimes you use reg regular vegetable oil, but I like to use the extra light olive oil because it's got a great flavor and makes a really good dressing. So all I'm gonna do is measure about a half a cup. I think we're almost there, perfect. Put that in, then we're gonna stir it around. Once I stir this for about a minute, I'm gonna pour it on top. And it's gonna flavor that entire bowl, of cabbage and noodles. Anytime you make a dressing, it has an acid, like a vinegar, and then it has an oil, so it can help stick together, right? And then it's got the flavorings, like the sugar and the chicken packet, okay? Now that it's ready, I'm gonna slowly pour it on. Now this is a really, really simple version of this recipe. You could add anything you want. Like I'm gonna chop up some almonds. You could add some carrots like we talked about last week. Throw in some carrots. You could add some little onions or scallions. Whatever sounds good to you. I'm gonna mix this up and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Okay. 
Okay, look at all these colors come together. So we've got that beautiful purple from the cabbage. We've got kind of the cream colored noodles. And then we've got that beautiful green color from the other cabbage. Then we're gonna sprinkle a few more almonds on top to add a little bit more of that brown color. Think how fun this would be. Make it with your friends. Make it for your family for dinner. Just make it a little snack for you after school, right? Now, I'm gonna take the rest of these almonds, sprinkle it on top. <gasps> and you're ready to go. Okay, I can't wait. I gotta try a little. Oh, look how fun this is. So you see the almonds, the little noodles, both of the different colors of cabbage. I've got to try it. Oh my goodness, that is so nummy. Mm, that dressing, perfect. I can taste the sweet. I can taste the flavoring from the chicken packet. And then you have kind of the soft crunch from the cabbage and the real crunch from the noodles. The almonds are delicious. Oh, this is great. Now, there's so many different ways to eat cabbage. If you want to try this recipe, it'll be on the website or share your favorite way to eat cabbage with your family, with your friends. Post it on Instagram, share it on Facebook, hashtag yoga me do, and join me in the other room for yoga. Remember a few weeks ago, we played a game called Five Senses, right? Now this is a fun one to play when you have to be inside a lot because it's winter. So what we'll do is we're gonna start out and we're just gonna notice, just sit crisscross applesauce, and we're gonna notice what do we see. Don't tell anybody, no talking, but just notice what you see. Like I'm looking at some curtains. I can see a window. I can see a wall. So kind of say the words in your mind as you can see them. Good, now what do you smell? I can smell the outside air. Notice what you smell and then say it to yourself. All right, what are you touching? Notice the material on your pants. Is it soft or is it kind of rough? What about your shirt? The carpet in front of you. Take a minute to notice what your fingers can touch without bothering other people. Nice job. Now what can you hear? Notice to even the little sounds. Maybe someone moving their foot. Or maybe a pencil being put away. Or maybe people coming in from recess. What do your ears hear? Nice job. So as you go through those senses, there's all sorts of things that you can think about and remember. But what happens is it begins to help your mind to close all those doors of things you're thinking about and just focus right now. Okay, so it's a really fun game. The last one is taste. Try to remember the last thing that you ate. When's the last time you got a drink? All right, see if there's a taste in your mouth. Nice job. All right, so anytime that you want to, you can always play that five senses game. If you're feeling nervous about something in the future, or maybe you're worried about something that happened yesterday, you can play the five senses game to help your brain to be able to close off those fears or frustrations and think about right now. Okay, nice job. Today we're gonna do something called the bridge pose. Now bridge pose has three different phases and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the first phase and pay attention to your body because I wanna make sure that you feel okay when you do this. And remember, if anything ever hurts or feels uncomfortable, don't do it, okay? So I'm gonna show you the very first stage and then we'll go to the next stage and then we'll go into a next stage but you get to decide where you go, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sit like we did when we did rocking beetle. Remember when we did that and we're gonna try it again. We're gonna start out with rocking beetle one, two, three. Nice job. Now we're gonna make sure you're in the middle. You're not gonna hit a chair or a friend or something like that. Your knees are up. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands right next to your hips, okay? Now, when you're ready, all you're gonna do is slowly make sure that you can lift your sit bones up and your heels are carrying the weight as well as your shoulders, okay? Now, automatically notice here where you feel your muscles. Like Miss Amy can feel my sit bones, I can feel my legs, and I can feel my heels. Okay, notice which muscles are holding you up. We're gonna be here for five counts. One, two, now keep pushing the hips up towards the ceiling, good. Three, four, 
five. Good, drop it down and rest. Now we're gonna come back to that first bridge pose, but we're gonna add something fun. Okay, here we go. Lift back up. Now take that right foot and wiggle it into the center and lift the left foot up. Okay, now hold it for five counts. Here we go, inhale. Two. Now gravity wants to push your hips down. You wanna try and lift them back up and use those muscles to push it back up. Last one. Good, put that left leg down. Now wiggle it into the middle to replace the right foot. So it's kind of got a good balance. And then lift the right foot up. Okay, five counts here. Inhale. Good, keep pushing those hips up. Lift them up. Two more. Last one. Drop it down, nice job. Now hug your knees in. Rock it side to side. Oh, good job. Now we're gonna come into the second phase of bridge pose. You ready? All you're gonna do is lift up again like we did. Now this time you're gonna take your right shoulder, lift it off the floor and tuck it under. Okay, you're gonna tuck that one under too and then take your hands and clasp them underneath. Okay, now if this is too intense, just come back to regular bridge pose. Okay, everyone knows what their own body can do. Remember, everyone's different, so it's not about competition. Now, if you can stay here, go ahead and take five deep breaths. Inhale. Inhale. Three more. Keep lifting those hips. Okay, last one, we're gonna add the right foot. Lift that right foot into the middle and lift the left foot up. Five counts, inhale. Press that foot into the mat to lift the hips up. Last one. Nice, switch the left foot out and the right foot comes up. Five breaths. You might feel those muscles getting warm and shaking a little and that's okay. Last one, drop it down, remove the shoulders and release. Hug those knees in and rock side to side. Nice job. Okay, when you're ready, we're gonna go back to Rocking Beetle just three times and then we'll do Daydream. One, two, three, and come into a seated position. Nice work. That is a challenge, isn't it? Now take a minute to notice what muscles are warm. Is it your hips? Is it your legs? Is it your stomach or your calf muscles? Good, your muscles work hard. Sometimes we don't even notice them, but your body's constantly taking care of you and making sure that you're fine, right? So we need to take care of it once in a while. Now, what we're gonna do for Daydream is all I want you to do for three minutes, okay? So we're gonna start at the top of our head. Relax your hands. And I want you to make your face muscles really tight, tight, tight. Open them, open your mouth wide. Move your head side to side. And then relax. Let every muscle relax in your face. You can't even smile. You just gotta let it relax. Good, now moving into your shoulders, lift them up to your ears. And roll them back. One more time, lift them up to your ears. And then drop. Every muscle relax, moving down to your chest and into your stomach. Sit up straight, but with not too much pressure so you can still kind of relax. And then your hips, adjust your feet if you need to, however it's gonna be comfortable for you to sit. And then your legs, let your legs relax and even your feet. And then for two more minutes, see if you can be so still Is there a certain sound that your breath makes when you inhale? Some people hear a rhythm, so on the inhale we hear and on the exhale we hear in your mind close for a minute and just relax
you would want that to go a little bit longer, if your class is really good at doing longer, go ahead and pause it. Challenge yourself to go a few minutes longer. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. And move your head side to side. Take your left arm, reach it over to the right. Right to the left side. And then switching the right arm over to the left side. When you're ready, we'll take one final breath all the way up to 10. Okay, inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And exhale back down. <laughs> nice job. Remember to share your favorite way to eat cabbage, and we'll see you next week on Yoga Me Do.